All right, hello. Um, continuing the discussion with Nova, there is quite a bit of changes to her kit, obviously, and most of them are really, really good. So that being said, a lot of my Nova builds have changed since the last Nova video, so we have a good chance to take a look at them right now. We start off with the standard Nova build. This one is a slow or speed Nova that you would go for your team, and it's very simple. You just go as much duration as possible, just like before. You don't have to go 45% range anymore. Having a bit of range feels really nice, and you can even mod for more if you want to use some other subsumability than the one I have here, which is going to be Dispensary. And generally, this is an all-rounder build. This is a build that utilizes a support Nova for a mission that you play with a squad, and it really doesn't need anything more than this. Arcane Aegis, Adaptation, and Prime Redirection are good enough to tank with the shield, because your shields, we have 95% damage reduction, and Arcane Aegis will recharge your shields on top of that, so you kind of become immortal using this technique and adaptation working on shields adds an extra 90% DR to that so you go to like 99.5% DR if I'm not mistaken it's pretty good uh, you can get ridiculously tanky by doing this but obviously adaptation can be replaceable for something like fast deflection for something like you can you get the drill this is a shield tank build adaptation just feels comfortable especially for the start levels and especially for people that usually just look for a steel essence long run with Korra, nova necros you know the regular squad this is probably the build that you're gonna use now you may be asking why the rank 3 precision intensifies because your fourth ability to reach the maximum amount you only really need 150 percent strength so this gives us 60 percent strength to the fourth ability so it's plenty and then the rest of it is just from the tile forge arkansas to have for ability strength uh these shards by the way you can take a look at them i have them for every single build that don't change at all so Two duration, one strength, one parkour speed, and one casting speed. Now, the uh, one of the parkour speeds can be exchanged for another casting speed. It's really a flex slot. You can do whatever you want with it. But I like parkour speed on Nova. It feels good. And I'm someone who had been using something like Lightning Dash on Nova for the longest time just because it feels really, really good to play with. So, having said this, let's showcase this first build because I think it's like the staple out of everything that Nova can offer. So we'll go to Elara. So the school we're gonna be using is Xenoric. This can be exchanged to anything you want. I don't think Xenoric is really that big of an issue, especially when you have the Spencer and all that. But I just want to start with a lot more energy. If I wanted to pick something, it would probably Madurai. So, you know, you have that. So we'll cast the Spencery. We'll cast our first. And we'll hold our forward to cast the Speed Build. And now we're just chilling here, essentially. So, as you can see, Aegis is broken. These guys don't really do much damage to us, and enemies take double damage from the fourth ability. You're just sitting here chilling, barring whatever your weapon, your preferred weapon is. Right now I'm using the Proboski Cernos. It's just a regular Proboski Cernos build. I can show it after for people that are interested, but this video is focused around Nova. This is just something that you can pick with her, any AOE weapon will work, but usually you don't even need a weapon because your team is gonna do everything, so recast your 4 and genuinely when you're in a squad, you see the timer on your 4 on the bottom right, how it runs out, this means that the wave is expanding and even if new enemies spawn within the wave, the wave will actually hit them, so it doesn't matter if you recast it or not before the time has run out. So now that the timer has run out, you should recast it, granted you're playing in a squad, and you should be good to go again. So just keep doing this, keep dispensary up. You see there is a lot of energy orbs from enemies, which is why I said that Zenwick is not really needed anymore. And you just do this. So... Very simple, as you see Molecular Fission is also working so that we never lose tax of our one to keep that 90% DR forever. And it really is just the Nova, the general Nova staple build, just something you are just pretty comfy on using. And you can support any kind of squad with this one, like anything goes, you can support some Mirage DPS, some Korra DPS, some heavy, like 
energy hungry DPS. You can support pretty much everything, so it's really, really good. So that's gonna be it for the first Nova build. The second build will focus around uh, traversing through missions very quickly. This is the so-called speedrun Nova build. So the speedrun Nova build utilizes every kind of parkour speed and sprint speed elements that you may have. Uh, along with Prime, Sure Footed, and Escape Velocity. Escape Velocity is an augment that doesn't really scale with Strength, so Strength doesn't matter. As you can see, we are stuck at 50% speed, so except that changes, a low amount of Strength is absolutely fine. You only really pick this to traverse through missions very quickly. For this one, I will pick uh, Zenrig. Zenrig is absolutely necessary for this one, and generally, all you want to do is build for a bit of range, and then Duration is nice, because Duration actually scales with the augment and just go as much parkour spin speed as possible. Rolling guard for uh, invulnerability in case you lose your shield and things go iffy, but in general, as long as your weapon is something that is extremely powerful, then you should never really have any issue running this. So, we're gonna do a capture mission, showcase this and how it looks like. So simply just cast straight towards the direction you want to go. For capture targets and all that, you can simply just use operator. You should be fine. And then just keep going. Obviously mistakes will happen with the portals, it's a very hard build to control and the portal is one of the most uh, hard abilities to manage while playing Nova. But I feel like this build is fun and way more fun than in Titania, even though it's slower. So 51 seconds, not the greatest run, took me too long to kill the capture target but you get the idea of how this build plays out which is really nice. Our third build will be focused around nuking with our first ability. This is something that needs a bit of explanation uh, because of how your first ability works in Nova. So Nova's first ability, even though it acts weirdly, it counts as weapon damage. So it's like Wisps 3, it's like old Nova's 2, which you know doesn't count as weapon damage anymore, so that kind of sucks. But uh, as you can see, this counts as weapon damage. So... This means you can go Vigorous Swap or Arcane Arachne. This will boost the damage of your first ability by a lot, 315% uh, to be exact. And then as much duration, as much range as possible. Strength is not really needed, even though it scales the Augment's damage and the Neutron Star damage is being scaled by your strength, is not something you really need to make this work. So Nourish will add Viral damage to the first ability, and then Neutron Star will add Heat damage to the first ability, Arc and Vitality will double that hit damage to the first ability. Our strength modes with Onbill Vitality only will take our strength up to 99% along with Ability Strength Sword when you equip Overextended so that the first ability can seek out enemies easier. And then Arc and Reach here, it can be exchanged with something if you want more strength. You can probably go something like blind rage if you're feeling like you can keep up the energy because you do have nourish so efficiency is not really that big of a problem and then go something like transient fortitude you can simply put more strength here if you wish to if you don't feel like you're doing enough damage but from my testing this actually does deal enough damage and we're gonna see it in action right now as you can see this is a build only focused around the first ability molecular efficient is here because using the first ability will make it so that it slows or speeds up enemies and for this build we're again gonna be using xenric for one simple mechanic that is tied to your first ability so I'm here in an Axe Fisher Exterminate, and this is the reason why we're using Zenric. So the first ability you cast when you have Zenric is free, and we want to cast the Speed Nova ability. This is because every time we cast our 1 now with Molecular Fission, it will speed the enemies up and make the mission faster. So you cast your 1, and now we want to Arachne, and then swap the weapons while we cast the 1. And as you can see, it does one shot, so... Just change weapons, recast 1, change weapon, recast 1. Enemies will be Molecular Prime sped up then, and you just keep doing this, and eventually it will be pretty easy to do this mission relatively fast. As you can see, level 141 enemies dying fairly quickly. 
things like this Eximus enemy will need some bullets from your weapon, so be careful with that. But generally, your first ability will be able to kill everything on its own. So, Total Arachne again, when you lose it. So you don't miss out on the damage and just keep walking through the mission, recasting your one. Just like old World on Fire, really. This has line of chai checks, by the way, the ability, so make sure that you're in line of sight with the enemy when you pass this, so that you don't miss out on your damage. And just keep, keep check of how, what buffs you have up, so you know what to do. For example, now we're gonna ruse our acne, so while I'm going up on this elevator, I'm gonna proc it. Rebrook Zenric, Rebrook Nourish, and keep going. And obviously because you're using so many weapon damage retains uh, with Arachne Vigorous Swap, your weapons will also deal a pretty good damage with this. But this is simple for proking the first ability, and the first ability will do more damage with his arcanes, and then you're just chilling. So overall you can see you can use this ability also as a primer for your weapons, but generally it is good enough or base steel path to absolutely one shot every unit. You see 60 procs on this guy, he died, so you can just ignore him and move on. And this is also something you could subsume on Ember, you could subsume on Rhino, so if you like subsuming Null Star and using Neutron Star as an ability on other frames, Ember Rhino, absolutely golden choices for this type of playlist style. Although not as tanky as Nova right now. Actually, Rhino no, but Rhino is tankier than Nova, but Ember isn't what I meant to say. So, take care of the Eximus enemies with the weapon you're using. Proc Arachne again, for that extra weapon damage while constantly switching weapons. And we're gonna reproc Nourish now. Kill the Eximus enemies with the extra damage we have with our Kugazar. And just chill. So, as you can see, Pretty effortless, using the trick with the 4th ability as well, making them speed up, will make it so that every enemy that you hit with your one will be sped up, will be damage vulnerability, the damage vulnerability will get to them, they will come closer to you, so you have line of sight of them, and then you can continue doing what you're doing, and yeah. It is really good, when you invest into it. You can invest into this really well, and you can do quite a lot of damage to still pop if you invest into it. Now, this is not as fast as doing other stuff, but it is a way to do Steel Path with with Nova and do Exterminate missions faster than pretty much every other Nova build, so feels really nice. Up next is gonna be our fourth ability Nuke build, and this one is gonna utilize a weapon to boost the fourth ability as, as well as Zadat's Whisper. So, if you don't know, fourth ability, just like the first ability, counts as weapon damage and takes on weapon damage buffs like Zada's Whisper and like other stuff. So back in the day you would be able to do this with a Felerix with the bug between Zada's Whisper and the Felerix Evolution for the non-crits, which would boost your damage on your fourth ability by 2000% and absolutely one-shot everyone. Um, this has been changed since then, it's still really good and this still has a weapon that you can abuse to do this. That weapon itself is of course none other than the Kuva Sobek or the regular Sobek, doesn't matter which one you choose, and the Acid Cells. Now, you may be like, okay, there is more things than Acid Cells uh, that exist, like the Saxon mod set, Senate Detron with Thermomagnetic Cells, but both of these didn't come close to dealing as much damage as Acid Cells, and that is because simply this deals corrosive damage, which is way more effective against Kunir, and using that, it is actually way, way better. So, important to note, your Sobek will need to be modded mainly for Blast, and this is because the Blast AoE will actually count towards your 4th ability, and will further increase the amount of AoE you will deal with the 4th ability. So, this is the build for the Sobek, pretty standard, with Acid Cells for the extra AoE, 
and this is the build for Nova, not utilizing efficiency at all, using molecular efficiency so you can keep this, the neutron stars and the null stars from the first ability, and as much strength as possible for Zeta's Whisper with Molt Augmented, and then as much range as possible so that the explosions can actually chain. Now, you don't need that much range as long as it's a bit above 100%, it is 11 meters right now, so 11 meters is more than enough to chain enemies, especially when you use it on something like a survival mission, which we're gonna showcase now. And once again, just like the previous build, since this ability counts towards weapon damage, Arcane Arachne will boost the damage of your fourth ability by a huge margin. We'll go and showcase on the survival mission. You can go to Lara again, even though Corpus is a bit skewed, Grenier a bit harder to kill, but the beauty of it is definitely seeing Ada Lara instead of something like a Grenier Talison. Alright, so once again, Xenoric is the one that I'm using here. Uh, Xenoric is only really mandatory here for the start of the mission. If you have energy pads to take you to the max uh, energy, then you're still good to go. But, this is the drill. So... You get as much strength as possible. Right now we're gonna use Hardened Wellspring for that extra 10%. Cast out as Whisper, cast your first, speed these enemies up. And which is another really really good thing for the uh, kill per minute. Now you can actually speed these enemies up instead of slowing them down. Uh, where in the pre-patch you would only be able to slow them down because you're building full strength. And as you can see, because they're all clamping up together, killing one will cause another one to die. And then the blast frog will occur, the weapon damage will occur, and then it will create this chain reaction of just really, really, really fast skills. Also, I'm not sure what Zada's Whisper is doing there, but we'll just let it be. So, Rick has four again when that runs out. Kill one enemy, every enemy dies, and wins and repeat. So, from my testing, when the mission did not bug out, I could get really, really high kill per minute here, but you have to be careful as this build is way squishier than the rest. Because you're not using Arcane Aegis. You can use Arcane Aegis if you don't want to face something like a Grenier. If you're facing Corpus like I'm doing here, Arcane Aegis is a way, way better solution. Because you can actually face like these enemies instead of going back and forth all the time. Right now we have to go back and forth because they are dealing too much damage to us. But in general, against Gunir, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Gunir do less damage than the Corpus, especially the Corpus that are in the Amalgam faction for Jupiter. So we lost Zada's Whisper, which is why we dealt no damage. Broke it again. Arcane Arachne, go back. My Sobic is built for Magnetic, not that it matters, Magnetic just feels really nice because it does more damage to enemies overguard and procs electricity when it hits ever guarded enemies. It has a chance, I think, to proc electricity, not guaranteed, but in general it is a really really good tool against overguarded enemies to, to bring to the table, so it feels really nice. So I received 346 kills in 2 minutes, doing this properly, getting better RNG, uh, you can easily get 200 kills per minute. If you're good. Right now I'm trying to showcase this and its destruction as much as possible, so... I'm not really killing many enemies at the same time. But as you can see, it is pretty good. And one thing that it is, is that it's insanely satisfying. And I do mean like, killing one enemy and seeing the entire room blow up. This is something that I've been missing, kinda, from Nova. And this build has actually become way, way stronger than the build that we used to have back in the day with the Felarix, so... Really, really happy about this. It is one of my favorite Nova builds after all. And it's a good replacement since the second ability of Nova is not as great anymore. It doesn't really do as much damage since it's not counted as weapon damage anymore. And it also has line of chai text, while the fourth ability simply doesn't, so... Really, really, really good as a new can tool. We're gonna stay for five minutes here. I'm gonna cut to show you the Acolyte kill when the Acolyte comes around, but it's not something crazy. For Acolytes, you probably do need a very strong melee weapon to take care of them, and it's gonna do way better work. But we're also gonna kill. We're also gonna see the kills per minute that I got on the five minute mark, which is what we're mostly interested about. So our timer has reached 5 minutes, I got 907 kills in 5 minutes, so 
We didn't really see the destruction of nature of the, this build when it comes to doing survival missions, and an endless survival mission with something like this will be really funny. Especially because Acid Soul skills with Max H3, adding uh, Zada's Whisper to that will scale as well, so as long as you have a way to turn down the armor of enemies, uh, then you can probably go endless, but when it comes to dealing with other stuff, then obviously, um, you know, this is still really, really good. This is still something that even if you kill one enemy and the chain reaction doesn't stop, you can just kill a second enemy and then the, the chain reaction will start again. So something that for me is by far the most fun build that I'm going to show you today and the one that I'm going to be using the most. Last but not least, we're going to be showing the what I call Neutral Nova from Wish, because as you can tell, and as you probably remember from my last video, Neutral Nova is really not something that is in the game anymore, so I have tried here to recreate the Neutral Nova as much as I could, and it kinda works, it's really not that bad, but honestly, as long as it's good for your team, then you're you're fine with it. So Neutral Nova, the point of it was when you are entering some kind of mission that is harder and that you don't want to speed up enemies at all, then you would use Neutral Nova to turn down the speed as much as possible. The issue with Neutral Nova right now is that the lowest amount of strength you can get, which is 10%, will make it so that your first ability would give you a 0% damage reduction per particle, so you would die instantly. Now, with this build, we are down to 3% damage reduction per particle, but you are using 34 particles. So, as long as you have 30 particles up at, low, at all times, then you will have that 90% damage reduction. Pair this with Rolling Guard, Arcane Aegis, Energy Nexus for the free energy regen, because this is a, an elite deep Archimedean build, or a very long mission build and you're good to go, really. This is a bit of a stretch when it comes to building this. I'm not sure if this is gonna be really, really good, but it's definitely gonna be better than your standard build if you wanna go Elite Deep Archimedia because your standard build simply speeds, as enemy, speeds up enemies way too fast, and if it does, then those enemies that drain your energy and your health will absolutely destroy you and your teammates, and you won't be able to be playing in the mission. Also, Energy Nexus is here simply because on sometimes on LED Park Media, energy becomes a real issue. So, to showcase this, I have done my EDA this week, so instead I'm gonna do just a simple survival mission on the new tile set on Deimos. Alright, so we're here on the survival mission. Thankfully it was a fissure as well, so we have a bit higher level of enemies to work with. So once again, just like the rest of the missions, we're gonna be casting our four, our one, and then we're gonna be chilling as much as possible. Now I held one and as you can see the speed up of the enemies is not that high to really matter. So you're in not much danger while doing this. You can simply run away from the enemies, kite them, you can do stuff. And if you run something like a 75% strength, these enemies would run way, way faster. And if the mission gets too hard, you can simply cast the slow effect now in front. And they get a tiny bit slowed, not slowing down the mission as much. And you can, you have the ability to keep life support really high to keep playing the mission, and this is especially good on EDA because the Necromex come around, so when the Necromex spawn and you wanna save some time, you can simply cast your 4 to slow them down by just a bit to make the mission easier, and generally have a pretty good time. Now, I don't have a subsume for this, but my subsume choice would probably be Silence instead of your 2, so Silence would be able to disable any kind of these Exmos abilities that can get annoying when it comes to doing this mission, so it is something that you can keep in mind, for sure. We're using the Sickers and Cannon right now. Weapon choice doesn't matter, it's simply what you prefer. This is a squad play build, obviously, so it's really nice. And you kinda, you kinda chill by doing this. Once again, Arcanes are Arcane Aegis, and if you are using a primary, then you would probably go for Arcane Acceleration, secondary for Arcane Velocity, etc, etc, but Arcane Aegis is there, so you can simply face tank very easily, so... This is me casting the 4th ability to speed up enemies pretty much all the time, but now the Necromech will spawn in, so I'm gonna cast a slow one instead. And... 
this is some decent versatility. It's not as good as Neutral Nova, but it is something that you can sort of replace Neutral Nova with, which is pretty good, in my opinion. So, Necromex here, it's thankfully a Bone Widow, he's really weak, and we're gonna slow him down. If things get uh, weird, we can always just roll for a rolling guard, so have to keep that in mind. And yeah. Wow, he's constantly looking at me. I have no chance. Yeah, as you can see, with uh, good old arcane ages, we're not really in any danger right now. Now, obviously, these are way less level than 300, and the net the missions on EDA will have way more regulations, but. Right now I'm solo, I'm not with a team, which makes my time to kill way way less. On a team play, your time to kill and your squad will be taking care of killing a lot of the enemies and you won't have to. And also you're gonna be helping them kill enemies easier by giving them 200% damage vulnerability to the enemies. Which is probably one of the best debuffs you can put alongside Banshee as a sonar, which is by far the best one. So, very simple, very effective. Uh, something to help you with these high level missions if you choose to go for them and something to keep in mind when trying to do EDA and if you ever get no in EDA you should most likely pick something like this to help your teammates without making the mission any harder or without slowing them down which is really nice that's gonna be it for the Nova builds I hope you liked this video and I hope you liked some of the builds that I showcased hopefully Many people will be inspired by this and start building towards them. I tried building for the second ability with priming, with everything, but the line of sight checks makes it simply not worth it compared to the other abilities like your first and your fourth when it comes to nuking. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you on the next one.